Another large storm will be coming to the United States today and also through tomorrow and Friday, where even more severe weather will be a possibility across a very large chunk of the United States, with the predominant threat being wind and hail, but we could also see a few tornadoes. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down everything that you need to know about the weather pattern that will be impacting the country over the next several days that will lead to more severe weather. Let's begin, though, with what's happening right now across the United States as of early this morning, and one thing you'll notice right off the bat is that there are a lot more storms across the Midwest and even back into the Southern Plains today than there were yesterday. And a lot of this activity really began yesterday afternoon and evening. And it still transpired into even early this morning where showers and thunderstorms do continue to be a threat. We did have multiple tornadoes yesterday, especially across Iowa. The majority of those were weak. We did have one very crazy tornado back over near Whitman in uh, Nebraska yesterday. This was an unwarned tornado for about 10 to 15 minutes and then it ended up being on the ground for almost an hour. Uh, hopefully everybody's okay in Whitman. I've seen some reports just to kind of give you guys an update from what I know. I know that we've at least heard about of a couple of injuries that are unconfirmed at this point. I hope everybody's okay in Whitman. It was an unwarned tornado that went through that area. So prayers to anybody in that area. Aside from that, the severe weather risk today will take place anywhere from the Northeast all the way back into the Southern Plains and even parts of the High Plains. The risk for severe weather today is just another huge area. Now the good news, is that right now the risk is not actually that high. Obviously, we have three different level two risks, which means that we have three slight risks for severe weather, one of which is from Kentucky back into parts of the Northeast, including Southern New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, several other states, including Maryland. We also have another slight risk in Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi, Alabama, and then our third slight risk, which is all the way back over in the High Plains, which is not something that we've seen here for at least a few days now, where there will be a potential for some large hail and damaging winds. The main concern today, though, overall will be damaging winds, especially across areas in the uh, Mississippi Valley and also back over into the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic region. I wouldn't be surprised if we have an enhanced risk somewhere in here, but overall, I think the risk today is going to be mostly just wind-driven. Overall, the hail risk for today, not really that high. It's a large area once again, but really low risk across the board. We could have some more large hail storms over in the High Plains, which is much more typical for this time of the year. But one one thing that you might find crazy is that we have zero tornado risk, or at least that's what the Storm Prediction Center is forecasting. At least for the time being, there is a close to zero or almost non-zero tornado risk across most of the United States today. Now, there could still be an isolated tornado or two. I still think there's a chance maybe back over in like Southeast Ohio or maybe even to Pennsylvania, but I think the risk is just low enough to the point where we don't need a risk outlined, at least for the time being. That could always change in future outlooks, so just keep that in mind. Tomorrow's a different story though as we go into tossing trampolines on tall trees thursday we have a large marginal and slight risk for severe weather which goes from the central and northern plains also back into parts of the rocky mountains even and we also have another small marginal threat back over in the carolinas now, the main concern for tomorrow will be damaging winds and large to very large hail but we do have another tornado risk it's overall going to be a low to very low tornado risk but i wouldn't be surprised if we got a five percent tornado corridor maybe somewhere in western North Dakota or even into eastern Montana but overall the risk is at least for the time being low now let's talk first about today's severe weather risk and we're going to go region by region beginning with the southern plains where the risk for severe weather has already begun the main concern will be damaging winds across this linear line of storms anywhere from eastern Oklahoma back into northern Arkansas this will continue to push south throughout the morning so this is right around now storms will continue to plow down to the south with predominantly a wind threat with maybe some isolation large hail as well. By lunchtime, these storms will be moving into North Texas back towards Memphis, where again, the main concern will be wind. And eventually, as we go into the afternoon hours, those storms start to fall apart as they go into Mississippi and Alabama. We might get another round of storms later tonight back over in western Oklahoma. This will be predominantly from the High Plains severe weather event, but again, just mostly wind and hail. I think the tornado risk today is very close to zero in the southern plains. On the flip side of things, the east coast may be a bit more of a wind threat and also maybe a slightly higher tornado risk, even though it's very low to zero. This is what the timing looks like for this afternoon. We'll have a cluster of storms attempting to go through parts of northern Kentucky and southern Ohio, and also some more sporadic storms in Indiana and Ohio. Main concern, again, will be damaging winds and large hail. What we are going to be watching for this afternoon is how this storm line evolves. If it is more significant and looks more robust later this morning, I wouldn't be surprised if we got an enhanced risk for damaging winds across parts of 
Pennsylvania and New Jersey. On the flip side of things, it doesn't look like this and it looks a lot more weak. We might not see that and it might just be an isolated to scatter damaging wind threat in nature. But either way, we are still going to at least be talking about some scattered damaging winds in the northeast. So make sure that you're protecting trampolines and also protecting loose line items. Once we go closer to 10 o'clock tonight, most of these storms moving into New England and as well as Delaware and Maryland, where some clusters of storms may still be producing damaging winds. And then we are done with this as we go into Thursday, aside from very far eastern parts of the Carolinas. And then back over in the high plains, storms will try to fire later this afternoon. Main concern again, wind and hail. Might see an isolated brief spin up with one of these storms in Colorado. Sometimes it happens with these events, but again, overall tornado risk very close to zero out of this event as well. And then further up to the north in the northern plains, the significant tornado parameter values hinting at maybe a low end threat for tornadoes as we go into Thursday afternoon, especially across parts of North Dakota, where I could see a more localized tornado threat develop there back over in western North Dakota. So for the morning, storms will be out there, but mostly just elevated showers and isolated rumbles of thunder. That's about it for Thursday morning. By the afternoon, storms begin to develop back over in Montana and western North Dakota. Main concern initially will be hail and wind. We could start to see a tornado risk get going with anything that stays discreet. Looks like a really favorable environment for chasing because a lot of these storms, as long as they do stay discreet, they will have some pretty cool structures on them. By the time we get closer to dinner time, storms will be becoming more clustered together. This should eventually be driven into more of a wind and hail risk across parts of North and South Dakota. And then after that, things become a little bit more uncertain, but I think that'll be the trend for the rest of the evening. Beyond today, the jet stream continues to stay very active as we are going to continue to see these shortwave troughs moving across much of the northern tier of the United States with a dominant ridge in the southern tier of the United States. I'll keep areas warm and dry to the south, very active and very, you know, humid up to the north as well with lots of severe weather. We'll have another digging trough as we go later into the weekend and early next week. Another severe weather risk does seem apparent for parts of the Midwest as we go into early next week. And to put this into more simplistic terms, the weather pattern does look to stay very active across parts of the Midwest with another round of severe storms being possible on Friday. We could very well see some more significant hail, wind, and maybe even a couple of tornadoes across the Midwest on Friday. By Saturday, the trough continues to move east, posing showers and thunderstorms as a concern across the northeast and up and down the east coast. By the time we go into Sunday, things will probably stay active in the southern tier of the country, while a more surface-based ridge builds over in parts of the northern plains and the Midwest, but that will not last long. Unfortunately, another trough moves into the northern plains and the Midwest by Monday and Tuesday, where more severe weather will be possible across the central plains and the Midwest. And then once we go into Wednesday and Thursday of next week, right in time for the 4th of July, things do appear more uncertain, but the early indication from the European model is that it looks like great plans. If you have any sort of plans for 4th of July, at least the weather looks really nice out there. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.